Okay, so I just want to talk about apostasy for a little bit. So this is from the AhlulBayt.com team. Seem to suggest that Sayyida Zahra had no entitlement to inherit since she was exempt from such a right. Okay, so anyway, I'm not going to speak about the inheritance of profit right here, but I just was interested in this hadith. A man has two daughters. If one either apostatizes or kills him, she's not entitled to her father's inheritance. The other daughter, who, who neither murdered her father nor became an apostate, will still be entitled to inherit her father's possessions. So a question I have here, uh, which is unrelated to the actual uh, article, it's uh so does a daughter who apostatizes she does not inherit but she is still um so why does this question arise if uh, apostates are always killed see my question right my point is that they are not always killed okay and that's one proof from shia texts okay that was a shia um website so I have to also find, um, there are other proofs from Sunni websites as well, or videos. So I'll try to find some now. <clears throat> so I'm going to southern video. Why doesn't he believe in Islam? He's asking. No, no, it's the same question. It's not the same question. Of course it is. How is Islam close to Buddhism? How is Islam close to Buddhism? In the sense of involving in cultural and uh, politics and daily life is more. Yeah, I don't think. I think Buddhism and Christianity are more alike. Maybe. Uh, I just wrote a blog post about this, so it's, it's, it's a bit interesting that I found this video uh, but you know people are, are entitled to their opinions right you can compare different religions and see different uh... actually I didn't upload that article I was writing it yesterday so uh, sometime I will finish doing that post and upload that on my uh, blogger uh, website uh, bloggers okay let's check this one out Truth hurts. Or truth hurt. Why do they always refuse to believe that Muslims condemn uh, terrorism? We keep saying it, and yet they keep saying Muslims never come out and say, We're always saying it. And these people are blind and deaf and dumb. They never hear us saying anything. And then they just come and attack you. Very annoying. Hey, prove that. How, how do we not condemn it? We condemn it all the time. It's constantly being condemned. Terrorism is wrong. Right. You're not doing enough about it. What she wants to do about it? You know, find terrorists and and, and jump on their bombs so so we, we get killed, so other people can live? What are we supposed to do exactly? The police and, and governments are supposed to take care of terrorists, right? Not individuals. If we can hear an individual on the phone, yeah, okay, saying I'm going to blow something up now, then we can call the cops on him, right? Or try to stop him or whatever. Oh, very annoying. It's a fact. 
First of all, Islam is not responsible for everything that individuals are doing. They, they just refuse to understand this. Islam condemns violence and killing of innocents. That's in the Quran. Now, when did all this Muslim extremism start? Is it because we don't establish what I tell you? I yeah, it's political mostly. Yeah, that's the problem. The extremism starts when children are brought from a poorer country with their parents who are looking for a better life. And I get that, okay? They're looking for a better life in another country. But then what happens? They're bringing up the children to say, ignore the Western world. Ignore what you see at school. This is that, that's not true. Okay. Muslim parents are mostly like every other parent in Europe and, and the West. They're just trying to, you know, make a living and raise their kids to uh, obey the laws and so on. Okay. That's, that's the truth. It's actually um, extremists uh, and websites that are extremists that are attracting some youth. And that's what's really happening. So the government has to crack down on those uh, illegal websites. Okay, that's my opinion. Bad. Right. Television is bad for you. These people are bad. Well, how confusing okay, what? Is that? Television is bad. Yes, it is bad. There are a lot of bad things on television and internet. Internet's probably uh, in many ways worse. But um, so what people do in their own home, uh, remove the TV, that's a crime or something now. She's equating removing your TV with uh, terrorism or violence. That's crazy. Teenagers, so all of a sudden, they are hating because they don't fit in. They don't fit in because they don't live in that country that they were brought from. Yeah, but you can fit in because there's so many Muslims already living there. So that's not even an argument anymore, right? Yeah, there are problems with integration, especially if you're a new refugee. But these Muslim brothers right here, you can see how, how strong and, and um, confident they are. They're not afraid to, you know... Uh, put themselves out there and they answer questions and they're sincere uh, Muslims and they are not terrorists okay? but they're voicing their opinions and defending Islam so good for them and uh, then they have to hear women like these and and men also um, complaining about why does Islam do this and why why are Muslims not stopping um, terrorists well wow. You know, why, why don't governments stop terrorists? Watching TV is not bad, so parents can't tell their kids this is bad, that is bad. Right. You decide how to raise your children. She thinks that if you let your kids watch TV, they won't become radicalized because they'll be um, just like every other <clears throat> uh, Western kid, right? They'll be interested in hip hop and and uh, movies, so they won't be extremists. You know. Mike, you know, lots of these extremists that you read about in the papers or on the internet uh, were at one time not very religious people. And then suddenly they became a terrorist. So her argument doesn't hold water. It, it's not about um, how we raise our children. It's the problem is what's happening to children at some point um, after uh, in their teen years and so on. And what is affecting their uh, perceptions and, and why do they uh, become extremists? Yeah, exactly. Bad people don't respect anyone. So they won't listen to other Muslims either, okay? If they're extremists and they're brainwashed like that, which means someone is brainwashing them. The problem is there has to be something done about these extremist websites, uh, people teaching extremism. You know, if you have to go in the mosques and, and find those people, then go ahead and do that, right? 
people preaching hate on the streets of a country that we're a Christian country. So no kids are really Christian country. Now it becomes a Christian country suddenly. Instead of letting your kids watch TV and do whatever they want, no, now we're a Christian country. Well, it may be a Christian country, but there are a lot of uh, minorities there who are not Christians, right? And Christians don't mind it when Hindus are uh, saying these anti-Islamic things. You know, even apostates enjoy uh, reading those anti-Islamic comments from Hindus and, and extremist Indian uh, Christians and, and so forth. Right? Nobody's against that as long as, it, as, long as it's uh, Islamophobia. Yeah, they're all for it. Has nothing to do with uh, Christianity or or the UK being a Christian country, right?